subscribe to the Danny Houston podcast, man. Are you are you are you going to the studio uh, with Melo when he's going through the whole rap lot thing and getting off the label and that whole? Dog? I was with him for that. Now when he was when he would record when he was actually with rap a lot, I would catch him like at Ultima Sounds and different places, but I wasn't keyed in like when he done Southside Store. Southside Store, I helped him through the whole thing, and it's I was done such a good job. I recorded an album called Gemini, so we was we was making sure we wrapped this up because this was the bread. And then uh, producers and engineers over there were so impressed with how I was helping them out, they gave me an opportunity to record me a, a track. So whatever, Melo get some downtime or he burn off, because he would burn off a lot. He'll come do a couple of songs, he'll be gone. And they'll say, Fancy, man, you ain't got to sit in here and just, man, come on, search through some of these beats. And I started putting me, put me an album together. And a lot of times he'll come back in there and uh, it'll be a track that ain't come out of his catalog, it's mine. And I'll be in there. And he'll try to sit there and see if I got something like, cause it's my solo shit, you know. He'll sit there and look, and every now and then I grab some shit, and he'll be like, uh, uh-uh. you gotta let me in on that one. Uh, oh, what, uh, fancy things, you know. That was one of the songs that I was gonna do it, knock it out. Hmm. But fancy, we had me, Melo, and uh, Flip on you. Thanks from New York, uh, Detroit or New York, one of them. And uh, like, but if the song jamming, he ain't gonna just let me just kill it by myself. If he walk in and he. He want to jump down, but at once, one while I'll be like, nah, man, this me. But then I like, man, if he like it that much, let him in. You know what I'm saying? Cause he he give me the opportunity to do what I'm doing. So I was just letting him in whenever he came in there, want to get on side, man, just go on touch it, man. You know what I'm saying? So uh, me and Melo was working, man. Interrogation made us feel like real artists, man. We was working over there like a job. We would get there in the morning, and leave at night, mm-hmm. and Ronnie take everybody out to lunch, at least four, or five days out the week. We over there for Ronnie fight. Bookman was over there label. Yeah, 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 man. Take everybody out to eat. I'm talking to the people upstairs asking for everybody out to eat. At least three or four days out of the week. Can, can you talk a little bit about Ronnie Bookman a little bit? Oh, man. Good people, man. That's we, we wind up being family, man. Ronnie had a vision, man. His vision for us was he had it visualized so good that it's a lot that we didn't see. You know what I'm saying? We just from the hood, wild, like to record, like to. But Ronnie has like tools lined up he had like a real artist plan set up for us to get to the money and then we would get into shit and then show up to certain stuff you know just trying to really understand that this is our job you know we so used to doing shit and make a few dollars here and okay when money get low we go do us two three shows but Ronnie was trying to make us understand that hey man y'all lock in what you put in is what you're gonna get out of it and uh man he had like all the big shows, man. We done a celebrity basketball game. That's my first time ever being involved and shit like that. Uh, them South by Southwest shit, man, man, man. Been touching that shit. They got something like that. It be in Tennessee. Hmm. We're talking about all week. You can go in the room, take a nap, and get up, and then anywhere you go, there's some performing and shit going on. Ronnie had all that stuff lined up for us, man. So it was a big experience to be we. That's why I opened up for Ice Cube. All that Ronnie set all that up. Hmm. I'm talking about we done. Me and Melo went up against Biggie and Puffy and them. No oh, shit. At a box of balloons or some shit like that. Until we opened up. No shit. And it was, they, 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 they were Jodeci and Mary and all that. Remember, they was the whole little crew. Well, we done that motherfucker and went off. Man, we didn't went off to the people come back in our room and shake our hand. The hell is you talking about? Let me see. One other people, man. Lorenz Tate and his brother and them. This back when I didn't know he had a brother. Man, we performed at a ranch on the north side. Big old nice place. And we've done sucker free. Like, this shit new. Ain't nobody heard this shit. But Melo entrusted me to make his show tapes. So I was like, man, we got to put that funk at your mind. We got we to gotta put some of that shit first. But we was so excited about the new album. Till he was just a Melo, like, I want to bust the head. I'm like, now nah, how it's going to be is we got to play the shit that they used to. And then we're going to slide this shit. So he entrusted me. To make the show tapes, and he had started letting me make like a lot of show tapes for him. So we put Funk with Your Mind and another song that they already, they, they, when they come on, they like it. They know it's him and they like it. And then at the end, I put a half of a new song, and then we done one whole song that was new. And the way it came across, he was tripping because it was my thought. And man, we going through that motherfucker, and he see, he panties in the crowd, they, we, they never fell off. It's like, Everything that we done, they liked it. Even when it went to the new song, I had a pause so we can explain to them what's going on. So when we went, went in that sucker free boy, 
Melo seen all them people, they would vibe with us, and he looked back at me like, you bastard. I said, yeah, <laughs> I know what I'm doing, nigga. We, gotta, we, don't want to do, we don't want to do too much dipping. We want to keep it all the way. And then short. We ain't want to drown them out. We're going to hit them. It, it, it. Man, appreciate y'all. We got He didn't want to do that. I said, we do it like that. Trust me, man. They going to respect that because it's other people. That was got to perform, and we don't want to seem like we hogging it because this our city and you big Miller. I say just do it like that, and then he listened to me sometime. And when he done it like that, he seen the effect it had. Cause we got through, see the people followed us over there and want to talk and take pictures and shit. Cause we didn't wear them down. We met, we left some to make them be like, oh man, I wonder what they want to know what's up with that new album mm -hmm. because of the way it was presented. You know what I'm saying? Now we just got up there and done the whole damn new album. We'd have burnt them. They'd have been all out. They wouldn't have understood it. But we gave them enough to make them be like curious like a motherfucker. So uh, yeah, man, we well, Ronnie used to plug up. With Melo and Ronnie, them made me feel like I was a superstar. I was on my way. And everything, man, we get hotels, the people, radio station, if you go out of town, they pay for our room, the transportation. Then you get paid. I mean, I'm like, man, this the life. Mm. So me and them used to bump heads like, man, you need to take your shit a little more serious, man. They ain't just doing this for niggas because they nice looking. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Folks ain't just wasting their money. They, they see something in you. If you ain't got to, that boy ain't even have to pay for haircuts and shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. sitting in the background pants and like, man, this what the business is. You getting paid and you ain't even have to go in your pocket and do nothing. Was, was Melo not really taking it too serious or what was going on? He understood what it was, but Melo was like a street person too. You know, hood nigga with a bunch of talent. And see, one thing about when you crossing over into the industry and you finna try to get that paper, you gonna have to curve some of that shit. Because people waiting on that, they waiting on that side of you. They waiting on it. Uh, man, we did a show one time out of town, man. We had Ronnie's whole family with him, man. Ronnie don't never bring his family with him. We had the lawyer with us and everything, man. Now, me and Melo, we'll go out of town. I don't give a damn if it's a hole in the wall, whatever, whatever. It be thug niggas, gang members. We go, we, we go anywhere where we're going to do our shit that we agreed to do. And this time, we had Ronnie. Ronnie wanted to come. For some reason, he wanted to come. So he rented a, a something. We had we all go out of town. Everything going pretty cool. <laughs> but Curtis Melo full, man. I'm full too. I'm not dumping it on him. We full, but I'll be like level headed. I kind of pay attention to what's going on. We go inside. Yeah, y'all was still y'all was still on water at this time. What was going on? We fuck with it every now and then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But we were gonna be full. Whatever yeah. it was, we was yeah, feeling. It was good. gonna be on it. Yeah. Yeah. So we go in the club, man. We going on stage and do our thing. I'm talking. We rock this shit. We rock this shit. Man said, when y'all get through, where you go, you come out of the office and you go up on the stage. When you come out of the stage, you go back down in the office. Man, when y'all come back. I had y'all envelopes for y'all on the desk. Okay, so we going up there. I'm talking, we giving it to that. This one of them, one of them towns where they like all that shit. They like the thuggy shit. They like, you know what I'm saying? So we get through, we go down there. The man just give us the envelopes, man. If more things, if they look, they know I'm not lying. They just give us the envelopes, man. We we come through the side where a little pool table was. It was a, it was more acts went up there and they were saying fuck something. But this was a part of their act. They was they were saying they was talking some some rowdy ass shit. So me and Curtis standing by the pool table, and you got to kind of look around to see what's going on on the stage. Melo immediately thought they said fuck us. So I'm trying. To, I don't quite understand what they saying either at the time. So I'm like, man, fuck it. We didn't got paid. Let's just get the hell out of here. So Curtis snuck over there. Well, man, he got his lawyer with him. Every, man, Curtis take one of the, the pool sticks out of the um. You know, out of the little thing that they have in, and hit some cat, big old nigga, like he was like a D-boy, like, like he rocked this town, like he, this little town is his town. Man, Curtis hollered off and hit the man in the face with the pool stick. Man, them people mobbed their ass in that motherfucker, man, through chill. We had to get down, you know what I'm saying, like get down where you won't be fucked up, fucked up. They, the sheriffs coming there with the cowboy hats on, the people that went and told them that we are the troublemakers. And to the point they got, I'm talking about they, they, the, the, the people that's with us, hardworking people that don't even get into no, I'm talking about jacking our ass up. They take us back there, and the man who owned the club come back and he realized, oh no, they the artists. The, the, the loudest one, gonna, they was going to fold our ass up like a lawn chair. The man said, no nah, man, these are such and such. So they took the handcuffs off me and Curtis first. And then we had to tell them 
who are with us and shit. Man, when they took us back out there, the whole club is fucked up. So the man, we had the money we just made, we had to give it back. Then the man paid one of the police officers to follow us because they said the niggas still out there. They lurking around. They going to shoot up the, uh, they don't know which van, which thing we in, but they say they going to fire that motherfucker up. He said, man, I'm going to do y'all a favor, man, because y'all did do a good show. He, he had two laws and one thing to follow us. On, on down the road, like, make sure we get on down the road. So we get down the road at a, at a good piece. Man, I feel bad for the people that came to see the show. Curtis in that motherfucker laughing to my wood. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I say, say, man, I'm mad because they took the money back. He was like, they got us fucked up. I'm like, man, you could have got these people hurt, man. You know, these people fucked up in there, but that's the type of shit you got to get. Put your seatbelt on with this nigga because this, you know, we might have a good time and it might be some shit like that. But, man, we could have got, got fucked up. But that was just like one incident. But, yeah, shit like that rocking with Curtis, man, you're going to have to put your seatbelt on because that motherfucker might snap on some shit and might start tripping. He wild up in there that time, man. Hmm. He wild out. That was one of them times I just felt bad for the, the people that was with us, you know what I'm saying, because everything was going cool. And, man, he hollered off and hit a motherfucker with a pool stick, man. And them niggas was in that motherfucker. We didn't know all them people with that dude like that. But shit, them boys came over there like they're going to teach us a motherfucking lesson. And we was trying to get on, but they started picking up shit. Like, they was bringing these tables and shit over there. So it, it got to one point where we just had to, like, get down and try to protect your motherfucking dome. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. I just hate when the loud came and that man took that money back. That really what got me. I ain't know Melo was live like that. I mean, I, I, I ain't, yeah, I ain't know he was oh, live. Oh, man, man. Oh, my God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, that nigga that go there with that shit, man. <laughs> mm. Out of town, we don't know nobody. We drove up one time where the uh, Goody Mob them, you know, where they when they first was getting hot. We drove all the way up there, Georgia. Mm. Curtis walking out around. He want to go where they hang at in the night. I really want to get to a hotel. You know, we've been hanging out for hours with these. Curtis want to go where they hang out like late night like us. Like we grew up around here. Like, okay, let's go to Shannon's or something. I'm like, man, he, he that's the type of nigga he is, man. You know what I'm saying? He going to be hanging out with them. He want to go to the where the shit at, the dope spot, whatever going on, man. I'm like, that man wild, man. But that's what made me like him. That's what made me love that nigga because he wasn't acting. After a while, you know if somebody faking. This man, this just how this nigga is. You know what I'm saying? And he would accept me how I am. So I just accepted him how he was. And we just knew each other for, we had our fallouts and shit. But one thing about me and Mello, when we fall out, he would always come get me on some money shit. Hmm. So I said, them niggas really love me because niggas fall out, they ain't finna try to put no money in your pocket. Man, Curtis would be pulling up. Man, I be moving places and I don't know how the hell this nigga know where I stay. Hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I be to move somewhere and don't even be told nobody. Man, that boy pull up. Dun, 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 dun. I opened the door, man, the fuck you know where I stay? Who said, let's go. I got some such and such and such and such. And we'll get in the car and he, he always, he all, he know that money gonna make me change. I'm gonna be like, man, I'm finna go do this here. You know, I hit him with that bullshit. And that boy get in the car and he'll get in the car and break me off some, man. You know what I'm saying? I'll be like, let's roll. Mm. And he be like, you remember my other, you remember that song and such? And so I had to start wrapping my mind around some of this shit. But like, yeah, I, I got you. Man, you show up, man, I got it, man. So I, I be trying to remember, okay, fuck, when the music come on, I, I remember that shit. I just want to make this money right quick, you know what I'm saying? So me and Curtis rocked a lot of shit, man. Hmm. I was with Curtis before, right before I went and started working with the Walsh Nick. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston.